Hey everyone, it's Dr. Dickinson. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I use Google Jamboard for daily math routines. Jamboard is kind of like new on the scene, but it's really easy to use and it's easy to take any of your daily routines that you typically do, whether you're teaching English language arts or math, and put it into a format that you can use during your live sessions or you can share with your students. So they have a way of doing those daily routines and you getting the feedback that you need for instruction. So let's get started. So one of my favorite um, routines is this calendar. I know calendar is always used in the primary grades, but I think it's also really useful to do in fourth through eighth grade, right? Because after all, our kiddos have the number sense, they have the fluency because we're practicing every single day. But when they get to second, you know, to upper elementary, it starts to flip. It starts to um, not be um, as fluid as we want. And there's lots of great things that we want them to practice like decimals, fractions, percent, and all of those conversions, areas, multiples, factors, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so this is a great routine and I love this routine, which is why I want to keep doing it and I can with Jamboard. So the way that I did this, and I'll just show you guys really quick, is I literally just took a screenshot of each of these images here. So on my Mac, I'm just going to press Command Shift 4 and I just took a small screenshot of this particular image right here. It's highlighted and then it goes on my desktop. Um, I could take an entire screenshot of the image and add it to Jamboard, but when I'm starting out on any routine, doing something like this is really massive and can be totally overwhelming for my kids. So I'm gonna take a screenshot and then I can decide based on you know my first few meetings with my students, what do I know they know? Where do they need to practice? And you know, how long is this entire routine taking? Because if this is a daily routine, it's supposed to be a quick warm up, and it's taking an hour, it's too long. Uh, so I might want to just focus on just the today's number factors, multiples, etc. And then once I have decided on that, I will just go into the Jamboard here, going into my Google Drive, clicking on the keypad finding Jamboard, which I need to scroll down, opening it up, and I'm going to show you a complete one um, in a second. Whoa, I have so many Jamboards. And here's my recent jam, but I want to create a new jam. So let's do that. Let's create a new jam on Jamboard. So I'm going to go into that right there, and I'm going to create a new jam. Keep on jamming, people. Keep on jamming. There you are. Look at people already making copies. So I go on to the plus sign. There's my new jam. It's untitled. Duh. And just like a Google Doc, I need to name it. So calendar math. I'm going to show you a complete one in a second. It actually, I'm really stoked about it. I'm super excited. As you can see, it's unlocked, which is fine. Then because I'm just taking images that I want to add into this Jamboard, um, I'm just going to select the files from my device. Now I've already played around with this for a bit. You can add them all at once. It doesn't work like that. So just open them up one by one. It does take a little bit of time and there's the image then I can just decide where I want this to go. And I will continue to add these images from my desktop until I have a complete space. Uh, and I made this cute little workout space on a Google Doc. I thought, this is so cute. I wanna create a space that my students know where they can do their work, right? So it just made us on a Google Doc. All right. So here's what a completed Jamboard looks like. Again, these are all images. Now, as of right now, there isn't a way to kind of lock this down as you would in a Google slide when you have a master. So just take that into consideration that this is not on lockdown. So the students can edit and move and delete and all that, which is, it is what it is. So 
Um, now that I have my entire jam board, I can actually do my routine. I can do a couple of things. I can use this in both a synchronous and an asynchronous discussion. So remember synchronous is like your live me, you're all together and you guys are gonna work through a problem or you're gonna go through your daily routine. Now I would strongly recommend that if you are thinking about any type of daily routine that you do this during your live meet. You can also videotape yourself. I would do both actually. I would show my students in a live meeting and then I would do a follow-up video of myself. That way they have a worked out example. So with the upper elementary calendar, um, essentially what you do is you take the number of the day and I like this pen. I've already spent some time figuring out which pen I like the best. Today is the second, August the second. So that's my daily number. It's the second. And then we'll have a discussion about, is this number prime or composite? Well, what's the prime number? Here, I'm using math language. Prime number is divisible by one in itself. So is two a prime number or a composite? Well, I know it doesn't have any other factors other than one in itself. You have two times one. So it must be prime. All right, now that I know it's a prime number, I can start thinking about those factors, which are my facts. Two times one, that's a factor, right? You can also say one times two. And now let's go into the multiples. I always think, for me personally, helps me, multiples, we multiply. So when I multiply by two, what are the products? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and so on and so forth. Get my ellipses here. All right, now, again, my daily number, I'm gonna see how many ways I can make uh, area, which is the amount of space that's filled in right here. So I have two, two squares that are filled in. So I made the area of two times one. Also reinforcing the idea of len times width and arrays. Oops, that's one. I'm gonna erase that, which is, I'm nervous filming. One times two. Okay. And now a perimeter, which is the space around the shape. And it's fun when you get to kind of weird numbers like 13, because then you have regular shapes, but you still make the area, which is fun to do and to have the kids explore. So this, obviously, if I add it up together, is not going to make a perimeter of two. Remember, I'm trying to find a perimeter of two. But if I took half, I shaded in half of a square, right? Could I make two if every side is one half or five tenths? I could do five tenths plus five tenths plus five tenths plus five tenths. Yeah, that's one plus one, which is two. Yes. Okay, now we're going to do our daily big number, but first I need to put in my data set. So my data set is the date. So today's date is August, which is the eight month, the second, and the year is 2020 or 2020. Okay. I'm going to put all that into a data set. And this is a really good skill because students have a hard time. Um, again, you need to develop fluency in reading numbers. I've even worked with middle schoolers that they don't know how to read a number and that's okay. It just means that we need to practice that. Remember a series of three at a comma and now we can practice reading the number 822,020. Now I'm going to have my students make an equation to equal two. And this really allows, you know, we talk about in math, having some flexibility and manipulating the numbers. So uh, students can play around and think about different ways to make 20. I might say, oh, well, if I had, if I took out 20 and I just had two plus zero, which is two and two plus zero, which is two. So 20 plus 20, two plus zero. And then add those 20, 20 or two plus zero and two, that makes two plus zero plus two plus zero, right? That makes four. And then we divide that by the remaining number, which is eight. So eight divided by four, 
that will equal two. So that's how we make an equation. I'm um, gonna definitely have it open-ended so that students can play around with the numbers and just come up with different equations. Now we're gonna write that in standard form, which I did here, 822,020. And then I will do it in expanded form, right? Another important skill to practice. And then we can write it in word form. All right, so I will write it. Okay, eight. It's just taking me a long time. I want to keep this short. And uh, it definitely helps to get like one of those Wamcom stylus, which I have and did not hook up. So now let's do this part here, which is another important skill that my students need to work on. You're going to take the date. And write it as a fraction. So this is the second day out of a total of 31 days. I'm going to set that up by dividing. Remember, um, I always say, out oh, the top dog, down into the dog house. Right? And then you can have the students use this workout space. Nice little play on words. And they can actually work it out right here. And go through that with them, explaining why you need to add a decimal and a zero in order to divide. And now I'm going to use a zero as a place value because 31 is still too big. Now we can do that. And that would be six. So make 186. Subtract 14. Add another zero and bring it down. Okay. And then we can add a four here. Four times one is four. And that's 12. So it's about 0 0.064. And have your students practice reading that number tens, hundreds, thousands. So 64 thousandths and then if i change it to a decimal i just move the decimal point over two places which is about six and four tenths percent so we went through the whole process i've worked it out now my students know what to do i videotaped myself and i want to make sure that they are actually using this um on their own so google classroom this is why i would even recommend using jamboard as opposed to like padlet or something is that you can just assign this to your students and make a copy and then they all get it so what you do is you go to your google classroom click on create click on assignment and then you want to just do your daily calendar math you can give instructions I can add a file or a video, and then I will just add that here. Go into my Google Drive. Look, I can even add a video for YouTube if I want to model how to do that, so they can see my see me demonstrating the daily warm up. Now it's searching in the drive, and here's my blank copy. So before you go through the whole um, process. I would definitely recommend to make a blank copy that you can use over and over again. Otherwise, you're going to have to erase your board, which is fine and easy, but this just definitely makes it a little bit more efficient. So now the students can view the file or I can change it to make a copy for each student, which is so cool. This is a new feature. And then my students will get points. I can add a due date. I'll just leave a blank for now if I want to add a rubric as well and a sign. So now everybody has a copy of the daily calendar math. They can turn it in so I know how they're doing. And I hope you <laughs> like this video on how to use Google Jamboard for a daily math warm up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel 
and join my Facebook, um, Making Math Connections, and you will get to have a copy of all of the things that I demonstrate in the YouTube videos. See you next time.